Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And today's episode is a focus on vintage gear, but not reviewing it, talking about it. I'm talking about it with some experts, uh, Herb Riker from Starfile, and also the real expert actually is Adam Wexler from High End Audio Auctions. Now I've had him on the show before, but this, we wanted to go really deep. The three of us collectively, we, we, we've been around the block many, many times. But the, the to and fro, the back and forth between the three of us about what is vintage, how, did, how is it different than used when it comes to turntables or electronics or digital converters or speakers. Uh, it was a pretty interesting conversation. Lots of twists and turns. I tried to edit it to make it a little tighter and more coherent. And in the end, I decided, nah, I'm just going to let it roll. So what you're going to see uh, coming up is pretty much the way it went down. And like I said, I had a great time doing it. Thanks so much to Adam and her for participating. And uh, here you go. People who buy vintage audio and or you so it's not old enough to be vintage like when i did the spectral people said it's not really vintage because it's not old enough so is there your it's your business so where's the cutoff for something to be merely used versus vintage let's start with that is, is there a distinct number there it's an interesting question steve i hope so because having been doing this for 20 years yes you're vintage yeah. i'm vintage so <laughs> for instance this Mark Levinson DAC right here. Yes. I might have bought one of those used 20 years ago, right? Oh. And you look at this 20 years ago and you're like, oh, cool, like this is a great Mark Levinson DAC. And now let's say someone contacts me now to sell one or to buy one. It's 20 years later. Right. I'm 20 years older. Right. This piece is 20 years older than the, 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 the original old one that I got, right? <laughs> yes. So it's this big marker of time for me mm. in this hobby, especially considering that I, 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 I get so much equipment and get to play with and see with all different types of vintage or non-vintage equipment. But it's this marker of time where you're like, well, how much longer will something like this work for? Right. You know, 20 was... years ago wasn't that old. It was old, but now it's getting really old. Yeah. Now, it still sounds amazing, um, but, like, is this vintage? I don't know. I mean, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder, right? Yeah. Just to certain people, someone might say, this is vintage. Someone else might say, no, 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 you know, it's got to be from uh, 1970. Or right. maybe, it, maybe it's based on when you were born. <laughs> <laughs> right? The, the perspective aspect right? to what is vintage and what's That's not a, vintage. Is that possible? <clears throat> but, you know, the thing is... Um, yeah, I because there's nostalgia involved in things that are old, oftentimes. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Well, this kind of this is the the big question here. The big question for me is, I'm not somebody who who's into vintage audio. Okay. I get it. I get why people are, and I think it's really cool, and I've enjoyed reviewing it from time to time. But it's not me. Um, but. Is there a difference in the in the kind of customer that buys used slash vintage versus buys new? Um, it's not just because it's cheaper. I assume it's not just that it's cheap. Obviously, there's the collector aspect of, of okay. this hobby, right? So there's certainly people that buy things just for the collection aspect of it, right? So that would probably be a vintage audio buyer, right? right. Somebody that... Wants to buy something like, no, like, like, like I was like, going to say, like, like that, like that's that speaker. That is definitely this by is all definitions, eighty years old collectibles, <laughs> right? So someone's into something really old, really rare, really unique. But Steve, you might be in denial yourself about right. what's vintage and what's not I'm, vintage. I'm asking legitimately. You're in denial because I mean, you just you know, I, I lent you two preamps to, right. to listen to and test, and right. some of those might have been 15 to 20 years old, and you're right. saying that's not vintage. Uh, I, I don't, I'm what, saying there's a cutoff there. How I'm do you sure define that if it's is. not vintage? But it's just how used. Steve got, it's, it's just used. Just used? It's just old. Or what do you think? Used. A 20-year-old preamp. Steve fell in love with two 20-year-old preamps that I uh, lent him. Right. right. I know the preamps. The right. Are, the are, are they vintage? Of course. Steve's in denial. They're... Some of it is looks, you know. Right. If it looks vintage, it's vintage. 
That's true. But you he know, said that I mean, he, you could buy a new product. You know, that's when it, um, there's companies today that are making products that I think are going to become vintage really nicely. Right. Okay. Shit's a great example because mm -hmm. they have that distinctive shapes and sure. those designs. When you walk through your warehouse and you look at this stuff, the most distinctive looking, like this Levinson, right. usually holds up well in the vintage yeah, I market. Think this is I hate beautiful. to say that looks count, but they do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. And it's like movie stars. Something tells me there's a lot of <laughs> Wait, that movie shit stars out there. and vintage? <laughs> no, but I mean, you got to have movie star looks. Mm. You know, there's a reason people buy all that Morant's Model 9s and sure. 8Bs. And, I mean, this stuff looks good. I'm not sure we've beaten that out yeah, at this no. point. And people are still copying the Morant stuff. Yeah. That counts. And I think vintage, when I, for me, some of it has to do with looks. It can be really old, but it's not so vintage, right. you know? Yeah. And it has to sound, but I'm not sure how much sound has to do with it. Either. But there's a vintage sound. You could be nostalgic about a sound, right? And you just want that sound, that vintage Maybe sound. Maybe it's the music of your youth. Like, let's say you're 60 now, right? And you want to buy, like, a 1980s Morantz receiver because you had one just like that. Exactly. When you were in college, right? That's certainly vintage, does, right? Does, um, but you, you have conversations with your customers. Is it is it like that, that people buy it because it brings... It's like buying a Camaro yes, or something, right? Yeah, certainly, of course, yeah. It's there, a lot the, like buying a Camaro. There's always the, yeah, they didn't make them like they... They don't make them like they used to, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right? And also, you know... Just like the Camaro, sometimes you, it, it, that's a good com comparison because, you know, obviously if you're a gearhead, a, a motorhead, you know, you can't work on cars these days, right? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. You, can, but you can work on gear, you can work on... Your Camaro. You can, work, you on can Camaro. work on older... Vi yeah. I've actually, you're hit something really good there. I mean, I think, and we were talking about this as regard to the Shindo. Yeah. These kinds of designs, let's call them classic designs, or I mean, Shindo leans into the vintage by nature of his own work, which is brand new. But, and I've always emphasized this to my readers, you know, vintage tube gear, or tube gear that's simply made, not a lot of feedback, not a lot of solid state devices, you can take it anywhere, you can take it... You know, my mother used to fix radios on the t on her kitchen table. This stuff, they used to sell tubes in the drugstore. Literally, true. Absolutely. Literally. Yeah. And that's why the boxes of tubes look so good. They didn't sell those kinds of tube boxes to com companies. Those were so people could, they wanted them to look attractive. Right. That's pretty RCA. Right. Especially, our, but all of them, each one, when people buy... You know, when New Sensor buys, you know, the Gold Lion brand or the or Mullard or whatever, they're really just buying the box. Sure. The colors of the box and the logo because they don't make it like they used to. Right. You know, the inks used to, these are, the originals are like pre-OSHA inks, you know. They're really <laughs> toxic. Really <laughs> toxic. <laughs> really good. I mean, they, their red was better than our red. I got. I just got a, a an amp in the other day that uh, it was a Western Electric amp that had um, it had a radioactive warning sticker on it. Actually. Really? Yeah, there was actually it was literally radioactive tubes in it. Uh, yeah, it's still in there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll take a picture. Literally radioactive. It's so uh, good it can kill. You. <laughs> yeah, but the idea that. That these things are durable in an interesting way, yeah. and that you can't. You can, like open you can up the buy heart. an old Porsche and you yeah. can work on it. You can buy a new Porsche and you can't work. No, on it. it's not more complicated. So I that. think that there's there's there you know in terms of the vintage uh, so, person. That, yeah. yeah. So in other words, a, a young vintage buyer who's not because they had it when they were young, right? If a 25 year old vintage yeah. buyer versus a 65 year old one. So the 65 year old guy wants the the, the audio of his youth. And the young guy is just buying it because it's cool. It looks cool. It has a story behind it. That well, sort I think, of thing. Is that fair? Um, well, listen, you know, people of my age, oh, 42. So you're in the middle. Uh, now. You're not old, but you're not young. Yeah, I don't know where I fit into yeah. this conversation. What generation? Are you X? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I'm 42. I think you're X. Born in 1978. I think you're X, but I don't know. Um, I think that there are plenty of people that appreciate fine design, and they realize that right. it doesn't exist now in mm -hmm. a lot of cases, or they can't find it, or they can't afford it. 
right? right? So you want to buy a, a Marantz receiver that's from the late 70s, early 80s. Mm. It looks freaking cool. It does. You got that gyro knob, that knob feel, oh, you yeah. know? Knob feel. I'm into knobs. Yeah. yeah. There used to be a website, knobfeel.com. Oh, right, right. Where right, right. somebody rated the feeling of hi fi knobs. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but I once tagged an Instagram picture with knob feel, like hashtag knob, knob feel, mm -hmm. and somebody like like DM'd me saying, "Bro, like I can't believe this actually popped up in like yeah. in my feed that right, you right. tagged this knob feel." And I'm like, "It's a thing, yeah. right?" But like, I'm asked this this I this mean, when I was you, got I knob to feel. Talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's an issue. I mean, I've been told even by editors, yeah. we want to know how the knob feels. Right. I mean, that, and, and, they don't want to just know, oh, there's a volume control. Right. They want to know, is it silky? By the way, not just the knobs, but the, the, the switches. Sure, of course. When you move the switch, does it feel good or the, does it feel like clunk or whatever? You no, know? you want a little bit of a clunk or a click, right? Oh, you, you don't want, want the sound, but it has to be... But like I, the sound of a Leica shutter right. kind of thing. It has to be a beautiful. So sound. what I'm saying is there are people my age or even younger that, that care about that stuff. And it just doesn't, I mean, it exists, but not within their price, price range, okay. right? So like, uh, let's say, I don't know, let's say a new Levinson integrated amplifier. Your average person can't afford that, right? right? Easily it's, 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 it's a luxury item. But they could afford the two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar, you know, vintage Marantz receiver, and they could have a piece of that knob feel and yeah. design and, no, and industrial and, design. Yeah, it's huge. totally. You could cop a feel. Cop feel There's the knob. There's a guy Sorry. in my neighborhood. He's probably exactly or within a year or two of your age, and he started out. He was an IT guy. Mm -hmm. Real into modern stuff. He never thought about the old stuff. And one day he was walking down the street, and there was a Sony receiver. No, a Pioneer. A Pioneer Elite receiver. And he thought, oh my God, that thing's beautiful. And he's strong. And he carried it home. And he plugged it in, and it didn't quite work. And he was like, I really want this to work. So he started going to YouTube videos and all and he fixed it so it worked. And then, hey, it's a modern era. He looked on eBay and he's going, oh, this thing's worth a lot of money. And he cleaned it up and he cleaned the inside and he made a bunch of money. He, this is now one of his side jobs. And the story he told me recently, he says, I was going along and these guys were filling this dumpster, emptying out this house. And there was this guy, he had this amplifier sitting in a puddle and he's standing on it so he's high enough to throw stuff in the dumpster and he said I walked up to him and I said can I have that amp you're standing on it and the guy said get out of here and he goes I'll give you 20 bucks and he got off the amp and <laughs> gave him 20 bucks I think he got 1500 bucks for it after wow. he cleaned it up but this guy's now, his whole system is really cool, old, vintage stuff. Might Actually, he repairs number. old turntables and <laughs> You should stuff. introduce us. I don't know. No, he's, people want him to. He won't do it for money. I've tried to get him to do a couple for friends of mine. Because right. he's really painstaking. He's just got that kind of personality where he'll make, he'll work on that. He, he really likes Pioneer, particularly their digital products with the copper insides yeah, and yeah. all that. He's always like, you know, these things look like new when he's done with them. I'm just saying introduce me because I don't know any other 42-year-old audiophiles. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he would never call himself an audiophile. Oh, here but we go he again. Here we he's go got again. old Advent speakers right. that he uses. You know, it's all, he's got a 70s audio system okay. is basically what he has. Steve, is that vintage or is that used? 70s? Yeah. I think that, that's vintage. Okay. So... But is there a difference in the buyer uh, who's looking for speakers, for vintage or used speakers versus electronics or turntables or something? Uh, a difference? I mean, listen, everybody's different, right? Um, I think that, you know, obviously... In other words, do they only buy the vintage for the electronics and then have new speakers? Well, uh, just like anything else, when you, when you start, you know, you meet someone who's like then teetering into the obsessive range, right? Okay which is a dangerous place, but, you know, a lot of hobbies, 
you know, uh, involve obsession, right? And teetering. And teetering. And, uh, yeah, so there are, you know, obviously I get some very unique things, speakers. I mean, if somebody's going to buy this speaker for me, they would most likely be obsessive, right? Yes, and rich. And, well, and rich, because it's, it's like an obsessive purchase, right? Absolutely. I've got to have We're not it. kidding. The speaker really is 80 years old. And there's bragging yes. rights. I mean, having the speaker is a right. bragging right. Right. If there ever was, this is a trophy. Well, right. for the right kind of person. Right, the right bragging right to the, the right, right kind of person. It's I mean, a major trophy. 99% of the world's population would say, what pretty. dumpster did you pull yeah. that out of? And, right. and we should say what it is, because it doesn't say, what, what is it? Right, it's a Western electric speaker, so it's about eighty years old, um, and uh, it's a studio monitor, and uh, there's a pair of them, yes. and uh, they're uh, very old, and they they sound good. Highly yeah. sought after in Asia, in Asia, more than U.S. Right, seven fifty seven, um, and uh, we were just listening to them before, and there's uh, Americans too, but yeah. Mm -hmm. It what is. about the wavelength amplifier that's right there? Yes. Of course, is that right what that is? Yes. Yeah. So that's a wavelength wow. amplifier, and that is actually... An I've amplifier. never seen one that looked anything like that. That is the... It's a single-ended EL84 amplifier, and mm -hmm. that is the exact amplifier that... Um, Was in the Phi window. No, not in the Phi window. Why, why am I just spacing out? That uh, was reviewed in Listener Magazine by um, Art, Art, Dudley. Art Dudley. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, that's oh. the same one. Designed by Gordon, or built by Gordon Rankin. Yes. MagnaQuest Transformers. Yep. It's a huh. great amplifier. So it's 25 years old, at least? Yeah, yeah. it's right. very old. I've never seen that before. I didn't know what it was. It's so, interestingly, interesting. Michael Lavornia from Twittering Machines, I lent that to him for him to listen to. Huh. And then he made a post about it. And then Gordon Rankin emailed him saying, that is the exact amp that was reviewed by Art Dudley because it was the only one I made with MagnaQuest Transformers. Oh, wow. Um, so then I was like, well, you know, I'd already, you know, I, I get so much equipment here that I have to sell it because uh, you know, I have to feed my family and make a living. But I think I'm going to keep this one just because it is, it's pretty magical. And, and um, it, it's, it's got that, you know, Art Dudley connection, which is kind of cool. And um, it's just it's just rare and weird and, and cool. Yeah. So, yeah, provenance is a thing, you know, yeah. I would imagine. Um, I'm, I tiptoe around that because I don't, mm -hmm. I, 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 you You're know, discreet. I don't want to alienate nice. anybody, you know. Or, no, but, you know, I think. It's pretty intangible sometimes. Right. You know, you can't yeah. see it. But, I mean, the stories that go along with things... I do like, you know, and, well, and I like the story that that was an art Dudley, right? Or the story that you know when I bought these speakers from uh, these young daughters of the uh, audiophile that passed away, that she spent the money for a year of medical school, mm. um, which is freaking awesome. I mean, yeah. that's so cool, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I uh, that just I just think it, that's really yeah really neat. And yeah. what about the SME turntable? The yeah. SME turntable, um, I can't talk about where I got that from. Oh, <laughs> oh now I'm <laughs> I can't talk about where I got really, that from. really, really good. It's a great turntable. Uh, it's, it, was from, it was from someone in the business. That Kuetsu is a rosewood. It was rebuilt by Peter Letterman. Um, yeah. And, and right turntable. next to you on the bottom, what is that? This? Accuface? Accuface. Yeah. It's an E308. Um, actually, I was a big Accuface fan for... I, I, I still am. I um, still am. Yeah, I had a bunch of their Class A amps. This is just a regular receiver, not Class A, unfortunately. But still sounds great. Um, but they're Class A, low-power stuff. So and that's fun. from, would you say, the 80s or yeah, 90s? I mean, still um, yeah, this is probably from... Uh, probably the 90s, I think. Yeah. Okay. Pretty cool. I love their I love their class A stuff. They, they, they have, have style. style. They have, yeah, they I mean, have iconic style. It's analog only. There's no digital inputs or anything. It's probably this one does have digital oh, card. It doesn't have a digital card in it, but you could put a digital card in it. Okay. Um, I've never heard any of their, their digital cards. I've heard a bunch of their vintage CD players, and they sound nice and warm They're and really just nice. lush. I love their old yeah. CD players. Um, I've had some of their two box players and they're they're all great it's it's the japanese macintosh essentially it's yeah. the japanese that's a great macintosh. way to put it and the shelf Welcome. above it what's the yeah. black thing i can't see it this, so this is the power supply oh, for the for mark the, levinson, the mark levinson. Uh, 30.6 which i think was their top top dac 
mm. which is awesome. Now, what year is that? 90s. Like, wow. probably mid-90s. So this I'm is pretty sure that was a, the uh, Atkinson's reference stack for years. Yes. Not that specific one. No. Wow. Yeah. Um, and this is the 32. This was their reference stack. Uh, reference uh, preamp. Uh, no, oh, preamp. Yeah, sorry. When they were uh, under magical. Um, and obviously, 33H. Mm -hmm. I had a pair of the 33s, which are twice the height. Wow. We just sold those. It's a great sounding system. And this deck sounds freaking great. This is a R2, uh, it's a ladder deck in here. Yeah. Hard to, uh, it's, a, it's a great sounding piece. Um, you can't do ultra high res, but, you know, who cares? I mean, cares? The, the, the build quality of this is just absolutely unbelievable. I mean, with the individual analog channels being like in these separate towers here and the Stabbed digital it. Be, the digital being in the center uh -huh. yeah and then there's three power supplies inside here wow. digital and analog analog hmm. um i haven't seen anything like that no um, hardly anybody makes anything like that today no i mean this thing is beautiful uh i really love it and you know is it vintage is it is it just used i would say it's vintage i think it's all that future yeah